Hi everyone, welcome back. So I have some honeybee stems here that are, I think, last year's collection. But I have these stems that I have been wanting to use for quite a long time. And I've just recently got hold of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I've stamped them and cut them out with my brother scanner cut. Um, because I don't have the coordinating dies for them. But I've stamped them onto some watercolour paper that I bought off Amazon. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a link to it. But it's a super inexpensive watercolour paper but it seemed to have good reviews so I thought I'd give it a whirl and actually I really really like it it turned out it was quite a good thick watercolour paper and it seemed to cope with the amount of water that I sort of threw at it <laughs> so you'll see that later on for the background so for the bottles and the labels and a few of the extra little pieces that I'm going to add to the scene I'm going to sort of create a scene um, I'm using my Magello Mission uh, Mission Gold uh, watercolour paints and these are a huge set. Um, there's 36 colours in there and they are fantastic. I just, I love them. The colours are incredibly vibrant and and some of them are really, really bright, which has sort of lent itself kind of to this whole theme. So <laughs> my cat's trying to say hello as well. <laughs> Um, and so I dragged them out again. I love watercolouring. I love using a paintbrush and water. You guys know that. Um, sometimes I will use a aqua brush. Is that what they're called? I never get the name right. Um, one of those where you fill the, the sort of tube part of it <clears throat> with water and then use that to watercolour. I just don't have as much luck with that and um, the results aren't nearly as good as what I do when I have a paintbrush and water. Um, so I just have a little cup that with some water in it, as you can see off to the right there, it's kind of dirty <laughs> already, but I just carry on using that. And I have a paper towel next to it um, that I just use to dab off excess. If there's too much paint or too much water on my brush, then I'll just use that. I'll just literally touch the brush to the paper and that way it just absorbs any excess. Um, you can always add more, remember. So go lightly and then add more as you go. Um, and in some of them I was using, um, I would let the paint, the first layer dry a little bit and then I would go back with a second layer of colour. Um, and that worked really, really well. So for the labels, I wanted to grab three different colours of brown. So I just grabbed the browns. I know you can't see them on screen, but they're sort of like in the bottom part of the screen there. And um, I just grabbed three different shades of brown. I just thought it added to the whole um, old label, you know, grungy sort of thing. Um, and then all the little extra elements, like there's a feather, there's a skull, a bone, a little pumpkin, a bat, obviously the bat and the spider. I didn't need to go over with paint. Um, I could have gone over them probably with like a, a black marker or something. Um, just to really intensify the black, but I just went with what I was doing and uh, I really like how these turned out. By the time I got to the end of painting the bottles with all the potions and lotions and whatever inside them, <laughs> and these are full bottles, of course, um, I totally forgot to <laughs> paint the lids. So I'm just going back and painting in the lids for each of the bottles. Um, one of them has like a corkscrew, the purple one has, I think would be like a glass top and the same with the um, the red one. The red one, I actually have a blue bottle that's very similar, <laughs> it was my grandmother's and um, it's kind of like a, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a decanter, I think that's, that's what it's called. So yeah, it's kind of funny, I could have painted it blue, um, but it wasn't really the colour scheme I was going for. So on my purple bottle, you could see there a little bit that the the brown that I'd added to the part of the lid seeped into the purple. So the purple was still wet. So with watercolour, that's going to happen. If one of your colours is not quite dry, it will tend to want to move with it. So that can give you some very cool effects, which is what I'm going to try and do here on the on the labels, on the labels, on the sentiments. But if you're not wanting that to happen, just let one area of colour dry a bit more before you then add a colour next to it. 
otherwise it tends to want to they, they want to hug each other <laughs> let's just say that so for the um the sentiments uh for the happy halloween i wanted to go with purples and reds and so initially i put some water just just clear water on top of the whole label um i kind of used my a pen i drew a pen line around the sentiments um so that my scan and cut could pick the the um the sentiment itself up better and actually it cut around the edge of the uh, line I drew so it kind of gave it this just this cool different kind of look so I kind of ran with that so I, I put the water and then the paint within the lines that I the sort of outline of the of the sentiment uh, so not all the way to the edge of the piece of paper basically and then I just added some red and purple for the happy Halloween and some um, green and orange for the got candy <laughs> so for the background I've stamped this again onto that same watercolor paper and I'm going to and I used uh, for all my ink I'll use the waterproof ink on three blackout um, it means that I can use uh, water with it and watercolors so I decided to drag out my brusho now I love my brushos, they are awesome. <laughs> um, and they're basically a pigment powder, highly pigmented powder that you sort of can sprinkle on like I'm doing here and you'll see hardly anything. Um, and you can then add water to it, which I will show you in a minute. And it just, it's like the colors explode. It's, <laughs> it's so cool. So I have the black one here, which, you know, you would think, well, that's just going to cover the page but wait till you see the colors that come out of this um, and i will do this a couple of times and i'll dry in between just because i wanted it more intensified but you can start to see there already the blues and oranges that are coming out and there's a bit of purple as well as the black so even though it says it's a black pigmented powder there's also other colors in it now this isn't a shimmering one so this is just a matte color but i love these brushos i have i think i've had them for many years but i've had i've got the set of 12 i think it was um just to try them out and i love them and there's enough colors in there to be honest to you know to create lots of different things but the other way that you can do this is to spray your paper first with water and then sprinkle the and i mean sprinkle <laughs> the powder over the top of that so, um, and that way you'll actually see that sort of burst of color come out, which is just as cool. It's a, it's a, it looks a little different, but it's so cool. So what I did there was I dried off um, what I had already added. And now I'm going back in with some more water, uh, with some more powder, sorry. And I'm just lightly, it looks quicker because I've sped this up a bit, but it I'm just lightly tapping the back of the bottle. I'm not shaking it on. I'm not you know dumping it on there or anything like that i'm literally just tapping almost scratching the back of the or the bottom of the the little tub it comes in um and it's more than enough powder to come out to create a very intense background so once i've done that i then sprayed some more water over the top just to get it to sort of move and uh, dissolve so that it could you know the color could come out and you can see all the blues and oranges as well as the black in that one color so um and there's 12 different colors so uh in the pack that i had and don't mind those white stripes on there that's just reflection from my light <laughs> on the water um that's not gonna stay there you'll see in a bit but that is um basically a background created and you can still see the web in the background and and all that um so i started with my heat tool to dry it off but then i let it air dry which is better so for all my pieces now i decided that i wanted them to look a more little more grungy so i'm taking some brushed corduroy which if you've been there long enough you know it's one of my favorite browns <laughs> um especially around halloween time i love vintage photo too but i think brushed corduroy is just my favorite so um, i'm just taking a blending tool um and with a foam sponge and just inking around the edges of all the pieces um, with that brushed corduroy distress ink. And this is the normal distress ink, so it's not the oxide ink or anything. 
So it just gives it that sort of vintagey, grungy kind of look, which I love at Halloween. <laughs> I love any time of year, but I love at Halloween especially. So just going around the edges of all of those pieces, and there's quite a few little pieces, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's all those little things that will add extra detail to your scene or your card, whatever you're, whatever you're doing. You could do the same sort of idea, create a little scene on a scrap of page and, you know, instead if you're not into card making. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that, now that I have those pieces all inked up, I'm going to put my bottles together. I'm going to put the labels on them. I already had an idea of what I was doing here, so this was a little easier for me to just grab and go. Um, if you're not planning ahead like I need to for videos, then um, obviously just just play around with it and see what you can come up with as and what you know as you're going through the process. Sometimes things will change. Um, I'll start off with something. And um, halfway through, I'll think, actually, I don't really like that. So I'll change how I'm doing it. And even in the videos, um, I will edit a lot of that stuff out. <laughs> but I will, you know, sometimes change my mind on what I'm doing. And that's okay. Um, you know, your creativity is, is your own thing. That's, that's for you to do. So if something doesn't fit right and doesn't seem like it should be where it is, then change it. So for the spider, I did contemplate hanging him from one of the letters on the Halloween word, but I went back to my original idea to hang him off the bottle. So, so I'm just going to hang him somewhat on there. So it looks like he's hanging off the, off the top of the bottle, like they do. I have them everywhere. My house is just, we live near a forest, so <laughs> we have spiders all the time. And I actually, I love spiders, so I'm not, you know, it doesn't bother me. Anyway. So now I have the, and I never remember this name, I will get it here for you, the Layering Vintage Labels. <laughs> um, these are all Honeybee products, um, and I thought I'd just go through all the products we've used. So we've got Perfect Potions and Halloween Potion Labels as well, um, which coordinate really, really nicely together. Happy Halloween for the um, sentiment and the uh, background, and if the broom fits for some of the other little pieces. Um, I kind of showed that in the beginning, but I thought I'd slow it down and show you more of that now. So what I did with my lovely labels, vintage labels, I've already forgotten the name of it, <laughs> is I used that main, the largest piece to die cut. Um, it has some lovely detail on it um, around the edge, like a stitching detail, um, and then the center piece. And the idea is that it cuts out those sort of corners um, and you're left with this sort of frame and center piece. I will do something else with it so you can see it much clearer. But I wanted to use as much of that background that I just created. And I also wanted to sort of, I didn't want to lose the spider web that was in the background. So I actually inlaid them back in and just put a whole load of tape on the back <laughs> to hold those pieces in place. So you'll be able to see in a second a little bit better um, from the back where those pieces of die cut out and I've just basically inlaid them back in so it's kind of like a little bit of detail in the background it's not super obvious but it's in the background and it's kind of like a bit like if you've embossed a background you know into a, a, um, a background you've created with some ink and, and paint and stuff but it's it's so it's it's there but it's very subtle that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> So all I'm doing is sticking this to the front of an A2 size card and it fits perfectly on the front of that. So you can kind of see the detail there um, and you can see it a bit better in, in real life, obviously. Um, especially around the outer edges, there's like a lovely sort of stitching kind of or li line effect all the way around. It's really nice, like an embossed or debossed um, pattern. So to get my bottles lined up, because my sentiment is rather large. <laughs> so I decided to use a um, T-square ruler. So I'm using my little Simon Says one that I got in one of the kits a little while ago. And I'm just using that to roughly work out where my tallest bottle is going to go, um, which then actually worked out perfect for the size of the sentiment, the main part of the sentiment. And I'm just going to stick this flat um, to the to the card and I'm also kind of using the pattern in the background from that die to line up where I want them so that they're not too spread out because I think if you 
spread things like this out too much, they lose their whole, um, I don't know, like the, like the whole sort of purpose of the image and, and putting them together. You kind of want to create like a little vignette almost on your card um, so that it looks like there's like a grouping of of these little things and then that means it draws people's eye in and it means that then when somebody's eye is drawn in there's lots of detail there so that's why you add all those other little bits extra detail so that it then it gives interest to someone looking at it and they go oh there's the, you know they found this or that or the other so um so lining up my two outer bottles so i had an idea of how wide the whole little scene if you like is going to be and then to get this third bottle on because the this watercolor paper is quite thick and I've also got the labels on them I decided to grab a piece of just thin foam um, foam adhesive and it's not when I say thin it's not um, it's not narrow it's not very high so I think it's about one mil high um, which I love this stuff it's really nice because it adds dimension but it's not super high like it's not too bulky on a card or a project and then that way with the glue on the back um, it will help to hold it in place even better because obviously watercolored pieces are always going to have a little bit of warp uh, they get their warp on and um, so it tends to uh, it helps to hold everything flat as well um, and also it helps to adhere if you've got some wet adhesive on your foam even though it's a double-sided sticky foam it also helps to adhere those things much better so this is where I, although I had the idea in my head, I completely forgot <laughs> what order I was putting these little things in, um, all the little extra bits. Um, I'll, I'll work it out in a minute, but um, what I would suggest is that when you're planning your cards or your scrapbook pages or whatever it is, um, is to, if you lay out your, your dies and then lay out your stamps, like where you want to put the different characters to create that scene, um, take a photograph of it it'll at least give you an idea even if your stamps are clear or they you know the, the red rubber and you can't totally see what <laughs> what's underneath them or what's what they are um it'll still give you an idea of where those things go um and it just helps when you come to putting that project together um as to where you where you wanted to originally place those things so i had to do a little bit of uh jiggery <laughs> to get this where i wanted it but it works out fine and I really love it. Um, it turned out really nicely. Um, yeah, I was, I was pretty chuffed with this one. And it's grungy and it's sort of dark and <laughs> that's how I like things. <laughs> so, so just getting the last piece on here was just the feather. And again, with the feather, I just kind of decided to make it so that it, because of the shape of it, it looks like it's just floating and landed the way it, their feathers would land so once I've done that I'm just using a like a craft pick thing this is actually an old Cricut one to um, just grab the excess adhesive that might be oozing out <laughs> no one likes ooze so well maybe at Halloween but anyway and then for my sentiment I'm going to oh I nearly forgot the bat <laughs> um, I'm gonna stick the bat just between those two guys two large bottles I think you just look cute there. <laughs> so then for my sentiment, I'm going to stick the large one on first and then decide what I'm doing with the smaller one. Um, I just, I actually thought this sentiment was kind of funny <laughs> because uh, you've got all these jars with crow's feet and uh, dead fingers and bat wings and skulls and pumpkins and all this sort of stuff. And then the sentiment reads, got candy. So <laughs> I just, I don't know. It just tickled me so uh yeah you know like that's the candy i don't know i just thought it was funny so um and that is in the same stamp set the i think it's the happy halloween one um the one of the larger ones from honeybee and so um yeah i just thought it was funny so i thought i'd add that in there and then for the sentiment i stuck the happy halloween flat um, and then for the got candy, I'm just going to raise it up on that same one mil thick um, foam and again adding some wet adhesive behind it because again you've got some warping going on with the watercolour, all the watercolour paper um, and you just want it to be able to bond 
properly to each other and wet adhesive does that. So once I'd done that, I also thought maybe I needed something for the, the little bottle scene to be actually grounded on. So in theory, or in hindsight I should say, I should have actually put a little tiny strip so it looked like they were sitting on like a tabletop or something because you know me i don't like things that look like they're floating um and it kind of grounds things so i decided to just use a, the ruler again and draw a line underneath you can barely see it in real life it adds a little bit of something um but as i was doing that it was basically <laughs> drawing around the edge of all the all the pieces so it didn't totally work but it's fine uh so yeah so there, there you have it guys, it's a very grungy um, watercoloured scene, if you like, apothecary scene if you if you will, um, and I, I love it. It turned out so much better than I thought it would, um, so I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one guys. Bye for now.